Today's message is for those of you who are tired of living paycheck to paycheck, struggling to make ends meet, and feeling trapped in a cycle of financial stress. I know how it feels because I've been there myself, but I also know that it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, I firmly believe that each and every one of us has the power to change our mindset and create financial freedom in our lives. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. The 5 T's to changing your mindset and creating financial freedom. So if you're ready to break free from the limitations of your current financial situation, if you're ready to take control of your life and your future, then I urge you to keep watching. Because I promise you, by the end of this video, you will have the tools and knowledge to turn things around and start living the life you truly deserve. Let's get started, starting with the fifth key to changing your mindset and creating financial freedom, which is practicing gratitude and abundance. You see, mindset is everything. It is the lens through which we view the world and ourselves. Our mindset determines our thoughts, our actions, and ultimately our results. And if we want to change our results, we must first change our mindset. This is where gratitude and abundance come into play. Now, you may be wondering, what exactly is gratitude and abundance? Well, let me break it down for you. Gratitude is the quality of being thankful and appreciative. It is the act of acknowledging and recognizing the good things in our lives, no matter how small they may seem. On the other hand, abundance is the state of having more than enough. It is the belief that there is always enough to go around, and that we are deserving of it. So why are gratitude and abundance so crucial in changing our mindset and creating financial freedom? The answer is simple. They shift our focus from scarcity to abundance. You see, most of us operate from a scarcity mindset. We believe that there is not enough to go around and that we must compete and fight for our share. This mindset is limiting and can hold us back from reaching our full potential. On the other hand, when we practice gratitude and abundance, we shift our focus to the abundance that surrounds us. We begin to see opportunities and possibilities that we may have otherwise overlooked. We start to appreciate what we have instead of constantly chasing after what we don't have. And this shift in perspective can have a profound impact on our lives. Let me share a personal story with you. When I was a young man, I was struggling financially. I had a job that barely paid the bills, and I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was constantly worried about money, and my mindset was one of scarcity. But then I stumbled upon the concept of gratitude and abundance, and it changed my life. I started to practice gratitude every day. I would take a few minutes each morning to write down three things I was grateful for. It could be something as simple as a warm cup of coffee or a phone call from a friend. And I also started to believe in abundance. I told myself that there is always enough to go around and that I am deserving of it. Slowly but surely, my mindset started to shift. I began to see opportunities that I had never seen before. I started to appreciate the things I had instead of constantly chasing after more, and before I knew it, my financial situation started to improve. I got a promotion at work, and I even started my own business. All because I changed my mindset from scarcity to abundance. Now, I'm not saying that practicing gratitude and abundance will magically solve all your financial problems. It takes hard work, dedication, and perseverance to achieve financial freedom. But what I am saying is that it all starts with your mindset. And gratitude and abundance are powerful tools that can help you change your mindset and ultimately change your life. So how can you practice gratitude and abundance in your daily life? It's simple. Start small. Just like with any new habit, it takes time and consistency to see results. Here are a few practical tips to get you started. Firstly, start a gratitude journal. Every morning or evening, take a few minutes to write down three things you are grateful for. It could be anything from a roof over your head to a delicious meal you had. This simple act of acknowledging the good things in your life will shift your focus to abundance. Secondly, practice affirmations. Affirmations are positive statements that you repeat to yourself daily. They help to reprogram your subconscious mind and reinforce positive beliefs. Some examples of affirmations for gratitude and abundance are, I am grateful for all the abundance in my life and I am open to receiving all the good things that come my way. Lastly, surround yourself with positive and grateful people. We are greatly influenced by the people we spend the most time with. So make sure to surround yourself with people who have a positive and grateful mindset. Their energy and mindset will rub off on you, and you will find yourself practicing gratitude and abundance effortlessly. Which leads us to the fourth key to changing your mindset and creating financial freedom, which is to surround yourself with like-minded individuals. 
First and foremost, let me ask you this. Have you ever heard the saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Well, I am here to tell you that this statement is not just a cliché, it is a fact. The people we surround ourselves with have a significant impact on our thoughts, actions, and ultimately our results. Think about it. If you spend most of your time with negative, unmotivated, and financially struggling individuals, what do you think your mindset and financial situation will be like? On the other hand, if you surround yourself with positive, driven, and financially successful individuals, do you think your mindset and financial situation will be any different? Of course it will. That is the power of association, my friends. Now let me clarify something. When I say surround yourself with like-minded individuals, I am not talking about surrounding yourself with people who are exactly like you. No, I am talking about surrounding yourself with people who share similar values, goals, and ambitions as you. People who will challenge and inspire you to be the best version of yourself. People who will push you out of your comfort zone and help you grow. People who will support and encourage you on your journey towards financial freedom. You see, success is not a solo journey. It is a team effort. And the team you surround yourself with can either make or break your success. That is why it is crucial to carefully choose who you spend your time with. Now I'm not saying that you should cut off all ties with your current friends and family if they do not fit the criteria of like-minded individuals. What I am saying is that you should be mindful of the time you spend with them and seek out new relationships that align with your goals and aspirations. So how do you find and surround yourself with like-minded individuals? Well, the first step is to identify your values, goals, and aspirations. What do you want to achieve in life? What are your core values? Once you have a clear understanding of these, it will be easier for you to attract and connect with people who share similar values and goals. Next, put yourself out there. Attend networking events, seminars, and workshops related to your interests and goals. Join online communities and forums where you can connect with like-minded individuals. And when you do meet someone who resonates with you, don't be afraid to initiate a conversation and build a relationship. Remember, the people you want to surround yourself with are also looking for like-minded individuals, and you could be the missing piece to their puzzle. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Fear. I know that for some of you, the idea of reaching out and connecting with new people may seem daunting. You may be afraid of rejection or judgment. But let me tell you this. Fear is just a temporary emotion. But regret is permanent. Do not let fear hold you back from creating the life you desire. Step out of your comfort zone, and I promise you, the rewards will be worth it. Another important aspect of surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals is to be a giver, not just a taker. The relationships you build should be based on mutual support and contribution. Not just what you can gain from the other person. Be willing to share your knowledge, experiences and resources with others. And in return, you will receive the same. Remember, the more you give, the more you will receive. Lastly, I want to emphasize the power of a mentor. Surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals also means finding a mentor. Someone who has already achieved what you aspire to achieve. A mentor can provide guidance, support, and valuable insights that can help you on your journey towards financial freedom. Seek out successful individuals in your field of interest, and don't be afraid to ask for their guidance. Most successful people are more than willing to help others who are on the same path as them. Which leads us to the third key to changing your mindset and creating financial freedom, which is to educate yourself about money. You see, many of us have been raised to believe that the only way to be successful is to get a good education, get a good job, and work hard for 40 years until we retire. But I am here to tell you that this is not the only path to success. In fact, it may not even be the best path. Education is not just about getting a degree or a diploma. It is about constantly learning and growing both personally and professionally. And when it comes to money, education is the key to unlocking your financial freedom. So what do I mean by educating yourself about money? It means understanding how money works, how to make it work for you, and how to make it grow. It means learning about budgeting, investing, and creating multiple streams of income. It means understanding the difference between assets and liabilities, and how to acquire more assets. You see most people spend their entire lives working for money. But the truly successful people make money work for them. They understand that money is a tool, and they know how to use it to their advantage. And the only way to do that is through education.
Now I know what some of you may be thinking. You may be saying, but Jim, I'm not good with numbers. I don't understand finance. It's just not my thing. Well, let me tell you something. I was not good with numbers either. In fact, I barely passed math in school. But I made a decision to educate myself about money, and it has made all the difference in my life. You see, education is not just about what you learn in school. It's about what you learn on your own. It's about reading books, attending seminars, and surrounding yourself with people who are successful in the areas you want to excel in. It's about being curious and constantly seeking knowledge. Now, I want to share with you a few key areas that you should educate yourself on when it comes to money. First and foremost, you need to understand the power of budgeting. This is something that many people overlook, but it is the foundation of financial success. A budget allows you to track your income and expenses and make sure that you are living within your means. It also allows you to see where you can cut back and save money, which you can then use to invest and create wealth. Secondly, you need to educate yourself on investing. This is where you make your money work for you. There are many different types of investments, such as stocks, real estate, and businesses. It's important to understand the risks and rewards of each type of investment and to create a diversified portfolio that will protect your wealth. Next, you need to learn about creating multiple streams of income. Most people rely on one source of income, their job. But what happens if you lose that job or if you get sick and can't work? Creating multiple streams of income not only provides financial security, but it also allows you to live a more fulfilling life. You can pursue your passions and interests while still earning money from different sources. Another important area to educate yourself on is the difference between assets and liabilities. Assets are things that put money in your pocket, while liabilities are things that take money out of your pocket. Many people make the mistake of thinking that their home or car is an asset, but in reality, they are liabilities. They require money to maintain and do not generate any income. Understanding this difference will help you make better financial decisions. Lastly, I want to stress the importance of surrounding yourself with successful people. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you want to be successful, you need to surround yourself with successful people. Find a mentor, join a mastermind group, or attend networking events. These people will not only inspire and motivate you, but they will also provide valuable insights and advice. Which leads us to the number two key to changing your mindset and creating financial freedom, which is setting clear financial goals. You see, most people go through life without a clear direction or purpose. They wake up each day, go to work, pay their bills, and then repeat the same cycle over and over again. They never stop to ask themselves, what do I truly want in life? What are my financial goals? And because they don't have a clear answer to these questions, they never achieve the success and financial freedom they desire. But let me tell you, my friends, setting clear financial goals is the key to unlocking your full potential and achieving the life of your dreams. It is the foundation of success and the first step towards creating the life you truly desire. So what exactly do I mean by setting clear financial goals? Well, it means having a specific, measurable, and achievable target for your financial future. It means knowing exactly how much money you want to make, how you want to make it, and what you will do with it once you have it. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have any goals, I don't know what I want, and to that I say, it's time to figure it out. You see, Having no goals is like trying to navigate through a dark room without a flashlight. You stumble around, hoping to find your way, but you never truly know where you're going. And even if you do manage to find your way, it will be a long and difficult journey. But when you have clear financial goals, it's like having a bright spotlight guiding you toward success and financial freedom. You know exactly where you're going, and you can see all the obstacles in your way. And with that clarity, you can make the necessary adjustments and take the right action to overcome those obstacles and reach your destination. Now, I want to share with you a powerful technique that has helped me and countless others achieve their financial goals. It's called visualization. Every day, take a few minutes to close your eyes and visualize yourself already living your ideal life. Be yourself in your dream house, driving your dream car, and enjoying all the luxuries and experiences you desire. Feel the emotions of success and financial freedom. This will not only motivate you, but it will also attract the opportunities and resources you need to make your vision a reality. But setting clear financial goals is not enough. You must also take action towards achieving them. 
then this is where most people fall short. They have big dreams and goals, but they never take the necessary actions to make them a reality. They let fear, doubt, and excuses hold them back from reaching their full potential. But let me tell you, my friends, success and financial freedom require hard work, dedication, and perseverance. You must be willing to do whatever it takes to achieve your goals. You must be willing to step out of your comfort zone, take risks, and overcome any challenges that come your way. And as you take action towards your financial goals, remember to always stay focused and disciplined. It's easy to get distracted by shiny objects and get off track. But if you stay true to your goals and keep taking consistent action, you will eventually reach them. Which leads us to the number one key to changing your mindset and creating financial freedom, which is to identify and challenge limiting beliefs. You see, our beliefs shape our thoughts, our actions, and ultimately our results. And if we have limiting beliefs, they will hold us back from reaching our full potential and achieving the financial freedom that we desire. So what exactly are limiting beliefs? These are the thoughts and beliefs that we hold on to, often without even realizing it, that keep us from taking risks, trying new things, and reaching for our dreams. They are the little voice inside our head that says, You're not good enough. You'll never succeed. You don't have what it takes. But here's the thing, my friends. These beliefs are not based on facts or reality. They are simply stories that we have told ourselves over and over again until we start to believe them as truth. And the dangerous thing about limiting beliefs is that they become self-fulfilling prophecies. We believe we can't do something, so we don't even try. And when we don't try, we don't succeed. And then we use that as evidence to reinforce our limiting beliefs. But what if I told you that you have the power to change these beliefs? What if I told you that you have the ability to rewrite the stories that you tell yourself? It all starts with identifying and challenging your limiting beliefs. The first step is to become aware of your thoughts. Pay attention to the little voice inside your head. What is it saying? Is it positive and empowering? Or is it negative and limiting? Once you become aware of your thoughts, you can start to challenge them. Ask yourself, is this belief based on facts? Or is it just a story I've been telling myself? What evidence do I have to support this belief? What would happen if I let go of this belief and replaced it with a more empowering one? You see, my friends, we often hold on to these limiting beliefs because they are familiar and comfortable. But I want to challenge you to step out of your comfort zone and challenge these beliefs. Because on the other side of fear and discomfort lies growth and success. Now, I understand that this is not an easy process. It takes time and effort to identify and challenge our limiting beliefs. But I can assure you, it is worth it. Because once you start to let go of these beliefs, you open yourself up to a world of possibilities. You start to believe in yourself and your abilities. You start to take risks and try new things. And most importantly, you start to see results. And these results will lead you on the path towards financial freedom. But let me be clear, my friends. Challenging your limiting beliefs does not mean that you will never experience failure or setbacks. It simply means that you will no longer let these beliefs hold you back. You will have the resilience and determination to keep going, even in the face of adversity. And as you continue on this journey of personal growth and development, you will start to see that anything is possible. You will start to believe that you are capable of achieving your wildest dreams, and you will start to create the financial freedom that you have always desired. So my friends, I urge you to take action today. Start identifying and challenging your limiting beliefs. And as you do so, remember these words from the great Henry Ford. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Are you feeling stuck in your comfort zone, yearning for growth and change but not sure how to break free? Well, you're not alone. In today's message, I want to share with you five key principles that will help you step out of your comfort zone and unlock your full potential. Many of us are content with living a comfortable and predictable life, but deep down, we know that true growth and success lie outside of our comfort zone. Trust me. I understand the fear and uncertainty that comes with stepping into the unknown. But I also know that the rewards that await us are far greater than the temporary discomfort we may feel. So, if you're ready to take control of your life and make a positive change, then this video is for you. By the end of it, you will have a clear understanding of what it takes to break free from your comfort zone and start living the life you truly desire. Let's get started. Starting with the fifth key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is surrounding yourself with supportive people. 
This key is often overlooked, but it is crucial to your personal development and success. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, who are you surrounding yourself with? Are they lifting you up or holding you back? Let me tell you a story. When I was a young man, I was working as a stock clerk at a department store. I was content with my job and my life until one day, I met a successful businessman who changed my perspective. He told me, Jim, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you want to be successful, you need to surround yourself with successful people. Those words stuck with me, and I made a decision to change my circle of influence. I sought out successful and inspiring individuals, and I was amazed at the impact it had on my life. I started to think bigger, dream bigger, and take action towards my goals. I was no longer content with just getting by. I wanted to excel and achieve greatness. And it all started with surrounding myself with supportive people. When you surround yourself with supportive people, you are creating an environment that fosters growth and success. These people will push you to be your best self. They will challenge you to think outside the box, and they will hold you accountable for your actions. They will be there to celebrate your successes and lift you up during your failures. They will inspire and motivate you to keep going when you feel like giving up. On the other hand, when you surround yourself with negative and unsupportive people, you are limiting your potential. These people will bring you down, discourage you from taking risks, and make you doubt your abilities. They will be quick to point out your flaws and failures, and they will not hesitate to bring you back down to their level. As a result, you will find yourself stuck in your comfort zone, afraid to take that leap of faith towards your dreams. But let me ask you this. Do you want to live a life of mediocrity or a life of greatness? Do you want to look back on your life and wonder, what if? Or do you want to look back with no regrets, knowing that you gave it your all? The choice is yours, my friends, and it all starts with the people you choose to surround yourself with. Now I understand that it may not be easy to cut ties with negative and unsupportive people, especially if they are family or longtime friends. But you must remember that your life and your dreams are at stake. You owe it to yourself to surround yourself with people who will help you grow and become the best version of yourself. So, how can you surround yourself with supportive people? First and foremost, you must be clear about your goals and values. When you have a clear vision of what you want to achieve, it becomes easier to attract people who share the same goals and values as you. These people will be your tribe, your support system, and your cheerleaders. Secondly, be intentional about who you spend your time with. Seek out networking events, seminars, and workshops where you can meet like-minded individuals. Join a mastermind group or a mentorship program where you can learn from successful and supportive individuals. Lastly, be a supportive person yourself. The law of attraction states that like attracts like. If you want to surround yourself with supportive people, you must also be a supportive person. Encourage and uplift others, celebrate their successes, and be there for them during their failures. By being a supportive person, you will attract supportive people into your life. Which leads us to the fourth key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is learning from failures. We all have dreams and aspirations, but many of us are held back by fear. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. We stay in our comfort zones, playing it safe, and never truly reaching our full potential. But let me tell you, my friends, failure is not something to be feared. Failure is a necessary part of the journey to success. Think about it. Every successful person you know has experienced failure at some point in their life. Thomas Edison failed over 1,000 times before he invented the light bulb. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking creativity. Oprah Winfrey was told she was unfit for television. But did they let their failures define them? No, they used them as stepping stones to greatness. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. It is through failure that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. So why do we fear it? Because we have been conditioned to believe that failure is a bad thing. We are taught from a young age that we must always succeed, that failure is a sign of weakness. But I am here to tell you that failure is a sign of courage. It takes courage to step out of your comfort zone and try something new. It takes courage to risk failure in pursuit of your dreams. And it takes even more courage to get back up after a failure and try again. But that is exactly what we must do if we want to achieve our goals and reach our full potential.
I want you to think about a time when you failed. Maybe it was a failed relationship, a failed business venture, or a failed exam. How did you feel? Disappointed, discouraged, maybe even embarrassed? But let me ask you this. Did you learn something from that failure? Did you grow as a person? I bet you did. And that, my friends, is the beauty of failure. Failure is not the end, it is the beginning. It is an opportunity to learn and improve. Just like a baby learning to walk, we must stumble and fall before we can take our first steps. And just like that baby, we must keep getting back up and trying again until we can walk and then run towards our dreams. But learning from failure is not just about picking ourselves back up and trying again. It is about analyzing our failures and understanding why they happened. What can we learn from this experience? What mistakes did we make? How can we do better next time? These are the questions we must ask ourselves in order to grow and improve. I want you to think about a successful person you admire. What do you think their journey to success looked like? I can guarantee you it was not a smooth, great path. They faced failures, setbacks and obstacles, just like you and I. But the difference is, they did not let those failures stop them. They used them as opportunities to learn and grow. And that is what ultimately led them to success. Do not let failure hold you back or define you. Use it as a tool for growth and improvement. Take risks, step out of your comfort zone, and do not be afraid to fail. Because every failure brings you one step closer to success. Which leads us to the third key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is taking small steps. We all have dreams and aspirations, big goals that we want to achieve, and a vision of the life we want to live. But oftentimes, we get overwhelmed by the enormity of these goals and end up staying in our comfort zone. We make excuses, we procrastinate, and we convince ourselves that we are not ready yet. But let me tell you my friends, there is no perfect time to start. The time is now. And the key to getting started is taking small steps. You see, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It may seem like a cliché, but it holds so much truth. We often think that to achieve big things, we need to take big leaps. But the truth is, it is the small consistent steps that lead us towards our goals. It is the daily habits, the small actions, and the little choices that we make that shape our lives. Think about it. If you want to lose weight, you don't start by running a marathon. You start by taking a walk around the block. If you want to write a book, you don't start by writing the whole thing in one sitting. You start by writing a page every day. If you want to start a business, you don't start by investing all your savings. You start by researching, planning, and taking small steps towards your goal. The same goes for getting out of your comfort zone and growing as a person. It may seem intimidating to step out of your comfort zone, but if you take small steps, it becomes more manageable. You don't have to take a giant leap. You just have to take one small step at a time. So, what are these small steps? How do we take them? First and foremost, you need to have a clear understanding of your goals. What is it that you want to achieve? What is your vision for your life? Once you have a clear picture, break it down into smaller achievable goals. This will make it less daunting and more attainable. Next, you need to take action. It's not enough to just have a goal. You need to take action towards it. Remember, small steps lead to big results. So, instead of waiting for the perfect time, take action now. Start with the smallest step possible, and then build on it. For example, if your goal is to start a business, you can start by researching your industry, identifying your target market, or creating a business plan. These may seem like small steps, but they are crucial in achieving your bigger goal. Another important aspect of taking small steps is developing a growth mindset. This means being open to learning, making mistakes, and trying again. When we take small steps, we are more likely to make mistakes, and that's okay. It's part of the learning process. Instead of being discouraged by these mistakes, we should see them as opportunities to grow and improve. As the saying goes, sail forward. Moreover, taking small steps also allows us to build momentum. When we achieve small wins, it motivates us to keep going. It gives us the confidence to take bigger steps towards our goals. So even if the progress may seem slow at first, trust that it will eventually lead to significant growth and progress. Lastly, taking small steps also helps us to stay consistent. Consistency is key in achieving anything worthwhile. 
It's not about doing something once in a while. It's about doing it every day. When we take small steps consistently, it becomes a habit, and that habit leads to success. My friends, getting out of your comfort zone and growing as a person is not easy. It takes courage, determination, and a willingness to take small steps towards your goals. But I can assure you, the rewards are worth it. When you step out of your comfort zone, you open yourself up to new opportunities, experiences, and growth. You become a better version of yourself, and that is something that no one can take away from you. Which leads us to the number two key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is set clear goals. Goals are the roadmap to success. They give us direction, purpose, and motivation. Without goals, we are aimless, wandering through life without a clear destination. But setting goals is not enough. We must set clear, specific, and achievable goals. Let me ask you this. Have you ever set a New Year's resolution? Maybe you wanted to lose weight, start a new business, or learn a new skill. But how many of us actually follow through with our resolutions? The truth is, most of us fail because we set vague and unrealistic goals. For example, if your goal is to lose weight, that is not specific enough. How much weight do you want to lose? By when? How will you do it? On the other hand, if your goal is to lose 20 labies in 3 months by exercising 3 times a week and eating a balanced diet, that is a clear and specific goal that you can work towards. When we set clear goals, we are giving ourselves a target to aim for. We are creating a sense of urgency and accountability. And most importantly, we are giving ourselves a reason to step out of our comfort zone. Let me share with you a personal story about the power of setting clear goals. When I was a young man, I had a dream of becoming a millionaire. But I was stuck in a dead-end job, barely making ends meet. I knew that in order to achieve my dream, I had to do something drastic. I had to leave my comfort zone. So I set a clear goal to become a millionaire by the age of 30. I wrote it down, I visualized it, and I worked towards it every single day. And you know what? I achieved my goal at the age of 31. But it wasn't easy. I had to take risks. I had to work harder than ever before, and I had to face my fears and doubts. But because I had a clear goal, I was able to push through my comfort zone and achieve success. Now I'm not saying that setting clear goals will guarantee success. There will be challenges and setbacks along the way. But having a clear goal will give you the motivation and determination to keep going, even when things get tough. So how do we set clear goals? First, start by identifying what you truly want in life. What are your dreams and aspirations? What do you want to achieve in the next 5, 10, or 20 years? Write it down and make it as specific as possible. Next, break down your goal into smaller achievable steps. This will make your goal less overwhelming and more manageable. For example, if your goal is to start a business, your smaller steps could be to research your market, create a business plan, and secure funding. Then, set a timeline for each step and hold yourself accountable. This could mean setting deadlines or finding an accountability partner to keep you on track. And most importantly, take action. It's not enough to just set goals. You must take action towards achieving them. Now I know that stepping out of your comfort zone can be scary. It's natural to feel fear and doubt when trying something new. But remember, fear is just a feeling. It does not have to control your actions. You have the power to overcome your fears and achieve your goals. And here's the beauty of setting clear goals. Every time you achieve a goal, you gain confidence and momentum. You start to believe in yourself and your abilities. And before you know it, you will be achieving things you never thought possible. Which leads us to the number one key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing. Which is embrace discomfort. We all have a comfort zone, a place where we feel safe, secure, and in control. It is where we are familiar with our surroundings and our abilities. But here's the thing. Nothing extraordinary ever happens within our comfort zone. Growth and success lie outside of our comfort zone. It is only when we step out of our comfort zone that we can truly discover our potential and achieve greatness. But why is it so hard for us to leave our comfort zone? The answer is simple. Discomfort. We are afraid of discomfort, of the unknown, of failure. But what if I told you that discomfort is not something to be feared? but rather something to be embraced. Embracing discomfort is the number one key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing as an individual. It is the key to unlocking your full potential and achieving your dreams. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, 
Why would I willingly put myself in uncomfortable situations? That sounds crazy. Well, let me tell you why. First and foremost, discomfort is a sign of growth. When we are faced with discomfort, it means we are pushing ourselves beyond our limits. And that is where growth happens. Just like a muscle, our comfort zone needs to be stretched and challenged in order to become stronger. And the stronger our comfort zone becomes, the more we are able to handle discomfort, and the more we can achieve. Think about it. When you first started learning how to ride a bike, it was uncomfortable and challenging. But with practice and perseverance, you were able to master it. And now, riding a bike is second nature to you. The same principle applies to every aspect of our lives. Whether it's starting a new job, learning a new skill, or stepping out of our comfort zone in any other way, embracing discomfort is the only way to grow and achieve our goals. Secondly, discomfort leads to new experiences and opportunities. When we stay within our comfort zone, we limit ourselves to what we already know and are comfortable with. But when we embrace discomfort, we open ourselves up to new experiences and opportunities that we never would have had otherwise. These new experiences can lead us to new passions, new skills, and new relationships that can enrich our lives in ways we never thought possible. For example, let's say you have always been interested in public speaking, but you've been too afraid to try it. By stepping out of your comfort zone and embracing the discomfort of speaking in front of a crowd, you may discover a hidden talent and passion for public speaking. This could open up opportunities for you to become a motivational speaker, a leader in your community, or even a TED Talk speaker. The possibilities are endless when we embrace discomfort. Lastly, discomfort builds resilience and confidence. The more we are able to handle discomfort, the more resilient we become. We learn to adapt and overcome challenges, and this builds our confidence and self-belief. When we push ourselves out of our comfort zone and succeed, we prove to ourselves that we are capable of achieving anything we set our minds to. This confidence and resilience then spills over into other areas of our lives, making us stronger and more successful individuals. Now I know embracing discomfort is easier said than done. It's not something that happens overnight. It takes practice and effort. But the good news is, discomfort is like a muscle. The more we exercise it, the stronger it becomes. So how do we start embracing discomfort and getting out of our comfort zone? The first step is to identify what makes us uncomfortable. Is it public speaking? Taking on a new project at work? Meeting new people? Whatever it may be, start small and take baby steps. For example, if public speaking makes you uncomfortable, start by speaking in front of a small group with friends or family. As you become more comfortable, gradually increase the size of your audience. The second step is to change your mindset. Instead of seeing discomfort as something negative, see it as a sign of growth and opportunity. Remind yourself that the discomfort is temporary, but the growth and opportunities that come from it are long-lasting. And lastly, surround yourself with people who push you out of your comfort zone. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Surround yourself with people who challenge and inspire you to be better, and who support you in your journey towards personal growth. Always remember, the greatest growth happens when we are willing to be uncomfortable. Thank you. I believe that the way we start our morning sets the tone for the rest of our day. If we can transform our mornings, we can transform our entire lives. In today's message, I want to share with you five keys to transforming your mornings. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mornings can be tough. Waking up early, rushing to get ready, dealing with traffic or a busy schedule. It can all feel overwhelming, but I want you to know that you are not alone. We have all been there, struggling to find a sense of balance and purpose in our mornings. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you are taking the first step towards turning things around. You are taking control of your mornings, and ultimately, your life. These five keys that I will be sharing with you today have been tried and tested by myself and countless others. I can guarantee that they will make a positive impact on your daily routine. By the end of this message, you will have the tools and knowledge to transform your mornings and set yourself up for success. So let's dive in and make the most out of every single day. Starting with number five, which is transforming your mornings by focusing on self-care. When we talk about self-care, many of you may think of indulging in luxurious spa treatments or taking a day off from work. While those things are certainly enjoyable, self-care goes much deeper than that. It is about taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, 
and emotionally. It is about making a conscious effort to prioritize our own needs and well-being. So why is self-care so crucial, especially in the mornings? Well, let me ask you this. How many of you wake up feeling refreshed, energized, and ready to conquer the day? I'm sure not many of you can say yes to that. And that is because we often neglect ourselves in the morning rush. We jump out of bed, check our phones, rush to get dressed, and head out the door without even taking a moment to breathe and focus on ourselves. But here's the thing. How we start our morning sets the tone for the entire day. If we wake up feeling stressed, rushed and overwhelmed, that is how our day will continue. On the other hand, if we start our day with self-care, we will feel more relaxed, focused, and ready to tackle any challenges that come our way. So how can we incorporate self-care into our morning routine? Well, it all starts with the night before. A good night's sleep is crucial for our physical and mental well-being. Make sure to get at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep and try to establish a consistent sleep schedule. This will help you wake up feeling refreshed and energized. Next, take a few moments to set your intentions for the next day. Write down your goals, tasks, and priorities for the day ahead. This will help you stay focused and motivated throughout the day. Now, when you wake up in the morning, resist the urge to check your phone or emails right away. Instead, take a few deep breaths and practice gratitude. Think about all the things you are grateful for in your life. This will help you start your day with a positive mindset. Next, it's time to nourish your body. Make sure to have a healthy breakfast, drink plenty of water, and maybe even do some light stretching or exercise. Taking care of our physical health is essential for our overall well-being. But self-care is not just about our physical health. It's also about our mental and emotional health. Take a few moments to do something that brings you joy, whether it's reading a book, listening to music, or practicing a hobby. This will help you start your day feeling more fulfilled and happy. And finally, before you head out the door, take a few moments to practice self-care in the form of self-affirmations. Look at yourself in the mirror and say positive affirmations such as, I am capable, I am worthy, I am enough. This will help boost your self-confidence and set a positive tone for your day. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. I don't have time for all of this in the morning. But here's the thing. We make time for what is important to us, and taking care of ourselves should be a top priority. Remember, we cannot pour from an empty cup. We must take care of ourselves first, before we can take care of others. Incorporating self-care into our morning routine may seem like a small change, but it can make a significant impact on our lives. Not only will it help us start our day feeling more relaxed and focused, but it will also improve our overall well-being in the long run. Which leads us to number four, transforming your mornings by practicing gratitude. So why is gratitude so important? Have you ever woken up feeling stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed? I'm sure we all have. And what do we usually do in those situations? We start our day by checking our phones, scrolling through social media, and bombarding ourselves with even more information and distractions. But what if I told you that by simply practicing gratitude in the morning, you can change the entire course of your day? Gratitude is a powerful emotion that has the ability to shift our perspective and mindset. When we start our day by focusing on the things we are grateful for, we set ourselves up for a positive and productive day. So how can we practice gratitude in the morning? It's simple. The first thing you can do is start a gratitude journal. Every morning before you even get out of bed, take a few minutes to write down three things you are grateful for. It can be as simple as having a roof over your head, a loving family, or even the fact that you woke up today. By doing this, you are setting your intentions for the day and starting off on a positive note. Another way to practice gratitude in the morning is through meditation. Take a few minutes to sit in silence and focus on all the things you are grateful for. This will not only help you feel more centered and calm, but it will also allow you to start your day with a grateful heart. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, my mornings are so hectic. I don't have time for all of this. And my response to that is, you don't have time not to do it. By taking just a few minutes to practice gratitude in the morning, you are setting yourself up for a more productive and fulfilling day. And let's be honest, we all have a few minutes to spare in the morning. Instead of hitting the snooze button or scrolling through social media, use that time to focus on gratitude. But it's not just about practicing gratitude in the morning. It's about making it a part of your daily routine. Throughout the day, take a moment to pause and reflect on all the things you are grateful for. 
It could be something as small as a kind gesture from a stranger, or something as big as a promotion at work. By constantly reminding ourselves of the good in our lives, we are training our minds to have a more positive outlook. Now, I want to challenge you all to take it a step further. Instead of just focusing on the things you are grateful for, also focus on the people you are grateful for. Take a moment to express your gratitude to someone who has had a positive impact on your life. It could be a friend, a family member, a mentor, or even a colleague. By spreading gratitude, we not only make someone else's day better, but we also strengthen our relationships and create a ripple effect of positivity. Which leads us to number three, transforming your mornings by planning ahead. Planning ahead is a crucial step in achieving success in any aspect of our lives. It allows us to be intentional with our time and energy, and it sets us up for success. So let me share with you three key steps to planning ahead for a successful morning. The first step is to set a goal for your morning. What do you want to accomplish in the morning? Is it exercising, reading, or spending time with your loved ones? Whatever it may be, write it down and make it a priority. Setting a goal gives us a sense of direction and purpose for our mornings. It motivates us to wake up early and start our day with intention. The second step is to create a plan. Once you have your goal in mind, it's time to create a plan to achieve it. For example, if your goal is to exercise in the morning, plan out what time you will wake up, what exercises you will do, and for how long. Having a plan in place eliminates any guesswork and allows us to be more efficient with our time. The third and final step is to visualize your morning routine. Visualization is a powerful tool that helps us manifest our desires. Take a few moments before going to bed to visualize yourself waking up early, feeling energized, and accomplishing your goal for the morning. This not only sets our mind in the right direction, but also helps us wake up with a sense of purpose and motivation. Now you may be thinking, but Jim, I am not a morning person. I struggle to wake up early. Trust me, I understand. I used to be the same way. But let me tell you, waking up early and planning ahead can transform your life. It gives you a head start on the day, and you will be amazed at how much you can accomplish in the morning when you have a plan in place. I want to share with you a quote by Benjamin Franklin. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. This quote holds so much truth. When we wake up early, we have more time to take care of ourselves, our goals, and our relationships. We have more time to invest in our personal growth, which ultimately leads to success in all areas of our lives. Now I understand that life can be unpredictable, and there may be days where our morning routine gets disrupted. But that's okay. The key is to not let one bad morning throw off the rest of your day or week. Instead, use that opportunity to practice resilience and adaptability. Remember, success is not about being perfect every day, but rather consistently making an effort to improve and grow. Which leads us to number two, transforming your mornings by getting enough sleep. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. Jim, how can sleep possibly have an impact on our mornings? Well, let me tell you. My friends, sleep is not just a state of rest for our bodies. It is also a crucial factor in our overall well-being and success. Think about it. Have you ever woken up after a good night's sleep feeling refreshed, energized, and ready to take on the day? I'm sure you have. And on the other hand, have you ever had a night of tossing and turning, only to wake up feeling groggy, irritable, and unmotivated? I'm sure we've all been there. The quality and quantity of our sleep directly affect our physical, mental, and emotional state, which ultimately impacts our productivity and success. Now, I understand that in this fast-paced world, sleep is often seen as a luxury. We are bombarded with work responsibilities and distractions that make it difficult to prioritize our sleep. But let me tell you, neglecting our sleep is a grave mistake. It not only affects our mornings but also our entire day, and eventually our overall well-being. So how can we ensure that we get enough sleep and transform our mornings? The first step is to understand the importance of sleep. As I mentioned earlier, sleep is not just a state of rest, but it is a vital process that allows our bodies and minds to repair and rejuvenate. It is during sleep that our bodies heal. Our memories are consolidated, and our minds process and store information. Without adequate sleep, our bodies and minds cannot function at their best. The second step is to prioritize our sleep. I know it can be tempting to stay up late to finish that last episode of your favorite show or to scroll through social media. But we must understand that our sleep is not negotiable. 
We must make a conscious effort to set a bedtime and stick to it. Just like we schedule our meetings and appointments, we must schedule our sleep. The third step is to create a sleep-friendly environment. Our bedroom should be a sanctuary for sleep. It should be dark, quiet, and cool. The use of electronic devices before bedtime should also be limited, as the blue light emitted from them can disrupt our sleep patterns. Instead, try reading a book or practicing relaxation techniques before bed to help you wind down. The fourth step is to establish a bedtime routine. Just like how we have a morning routine, a bedtime routine can help signal our bodies that it is time to sleep. It can include activities such as taking a warm bath, listening to calming music, or practicing gratitude. Find what works for you and stick to it. Now, I understand that changing our habits and routines can be challenging, especially when it comes to sleep. But let me tell you, my friends, the benefits of getting enough sleep are worth it. Not only will you wake up feeling refreshed and energized, but you will also have improved focus, memory, and mood. And most importantly, you will be able to start your day with a positive attitude, which we all know is the number one way to transform our mornings. Which leads us to number one. Transforming your mornings by creating a morning routine. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. A morning routine? That sounds boring and mundane. But let me tell you my friends, a morning routine is anything but ordinary. In fact, it is the foundation for a successful and fulfilling life. You see, how you start your day sets the tone for the rest of it. It is like laying the first brick in the construction of a building. If that brick is not in the right place, the entire structure will be off. Similarly, if you do not start your day on the right foot, the rest of it will be a struggle. So what exactly is a morning routine? It is a set of intentional and consistent actions that you take every morning to set yourself up for success. It is not just about waking up early or having a cup of coffee. It is about creating a ritual that nourishes your mind, body, and soul. It is about taking control of your day instead of letting the day control you. Now, I am not saying that you have to wake up at the crack of dawn or follow a strict schedule. Your morning routine should be tailored to your needs and preferences. The key is to be intentional and consistent with it. So I urge you to create a morning routine that works for you and stick to it. I promise you, it will be the best decision you ever make. Thank you. Hello friends, Jim here today with an important message for you, a message that I believe will help you turn your life around. In today's message, we will be discussing the topic of goal setting. Now I know what you're thinking, I've heard it all before. Set goals, work hard, and you'll achieve success. But the reality is, many of us struggle with setting and achieving our goals. We start off with great intentions. But somewhere along the way, we lose steam and end up back at square one. If this sounds familiar to you, then you are not alone. In fact, millions of people struggle with goal setting and fail to achieve their desired outcomes. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you can turn things around. I will be sharing with you the top five reasons why you keep failing at goal setting and how to overcome them. These are the same principles that have helped me and countless others achieve success in our personal and professional lives. So get ready to take notes and let's dive into the five reasons why you keep failing at goal setting. Number five is unrealistic expectations. When goal setting, we live in a world where we are constantly bombarded with messages of instant gratification and overnight success. We see people on social media living seemingly perfect lives, achieving great success and wealth in a short amount of time. And it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we too can achieve our goals just as quickly and easily. But the truth is, these unrealistic expectations can be detrimental to our personal growth and success. Let me ask you this. Have you ever set a goal for yourself and felt disappointed or discouraged when you didn't achieve it as quickly as you had hoped? Have you ever compared your progress to someone else's and felt like you were falling behind? I know I have. And it's because we have been conditioned to believe that success is a straight line, a quick and easy journey. But the reality is, success is a winding road full of ups and downs, and it takes time and effort to reach our goals. We must understand that setting unrealistic expectations for ourselves is setting ourselves up for failure. It's like trying to run a marathon without training for it. We may have the desire and determination, but without proper preparation and realistic expectations, we will not reach the finish line. So, what can we do to avoid these unrealistic expectations when goal setting? The first step is to understand that success is a process, not an event. It's not something that happens overnight, 
but rather a journey that requires patience, persistence, and hard work. We must be willing to put in the time and effort to achieve our goals and not expect instant results. Next, we must be honest with ourselves about our capabilities and limitations. It's important to set goals that are challenging, yet attainable. If we set goals that are too high, we may become overwhelmed and give up. On the other hand, if we set goals that are too low, we may not push ourselves to reach our full potential. It's about finding the balance and setting realistic expectations for ourselves. Another key factor in avoiding unrealistic expectations is to focus on progress, not perfection. We are human, and we will make mistakes along the way. But instead of beating ourselves up for not being perfect, we must celebrate our progress and use our mistakes as learning opportunities. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes time to achieve greatness, and we must be patient with ourselves. Furthermore, we must let go of the comparison game. It's easy to look at someone else's success and feel like we are not doing enough. But the truth is, everyone's journey is different. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses, and we must focus on our own progress and not compare it to others. As Theodore Roosevelt once said, Comparison is the thief of joy. Let's not allow comparison to steal our joy and motivation. Lastly, we must have a positive mindset. Our thoughts and beliefs have a powerful impact on our actions and ultimately our results. If we constantly doubt ourselves and our abilities, we will never reach our full potential. We must believe in ourselves and our goals and have faith that we can achieve them. As Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Number four is the lack of commitment. You see, commitment is the foundation of success. Without it, your dreams and goals will remain just that. Dreams and goals. It is the fuel that drives us toward our desired destination. And yet, so many of us struggle with it. Why is that? Why is it that we struggle to stay committed to our goals and aspirations? The answer is simple. It's hard. It's not easy to stay committed, especially when faced with obstacles and challenges. But here's the thing. Anything worth having is never easy. If it were, everyone would have it. But let me tell you something. The road to success is not meant to be easy. It is meant to test you, to push you to your limits, and to make you stronger. And it is in those moments of struggle that your commitment is truly tested. It is easy to stay committed when everything is going smoothly. But it is during the tough times that your commitment truly shines. So how do we overcome this lack of commitment? How do we stay committed to our goals and dreams even when faced with challenges? The first step is to have a clear vision. You must know exactly what it is that you want to achieve. Without a clear vision, your commitment will waver, and you will easily be swayed by distractions and obstacles. Once you have a clear vision, the next step is to set specific and achievable goals. These goals should be challenging enough to push you, but also realistic enough for you to believe that you can achieve them. Write them down, make them tangible, and hold yourself accountable for them. But here's the thing. Setting goals is not enough. You must also have a plan of action. How will you achieve these goals? What steps do you need to take? What resources do you need? Having a plan will not only keep you on track, but it will also give you a sense of direction and purpose. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I've tried all of that, and I still struggle with commitment. Well, my friends, it's time to change your mindset. You see, commitment is not something that you have. It is something that you do. It is a daily choice that you make, a commitment to yourself and your goals. And let me tell you something. Commitment is not always easy. There will be days when you don't feel like doing the work, when you want to give up, when you doubt yourself. But it is during these moments that you must remind yourself of your why. Why did you set these goals in the first place? What is your ultimate vision? And most importantly, what will happen if you give up? You see, the pain of regret is far greater than the pain of discipline. And I can guarantee you, if you give up on your goals and dreams, you will regret it for the rest of your life. But if you stay committed, if you push through the tough times, if you keep moving forward, the rewards will be far greater than you can ever imagine. But here's the thing. Commitment is not just about achieving your goals. It's about personal growth and development. It's about becoming the best version of yourself. And let me tell you something. The journey toward success is just as important as the destination. As you work toward your goals, you will face challenges, you will make mistakes, 
then you will learn valuable lessons. Embrace these moments, because they are what will shape you into the person you are meant to be. Number three is not having a plan when goal setting, or more specifically, the consequences of not having a plan when it comes to goal setting. As I stand here today, I'm reminded of a quote by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. A goal without a plan is just a wish. How many of us have goals and dreams that we have yet to achieve? How many of us have made resolutions at the beginning of the year, only to find ourselves in the same place at the end of it? I believe that one of the reasons for this is the lack of a proper plan. You see, setting goals is easy. We all have dreams and desires that we want to achieve. However, it is the execution of those goals that separates the successful from the unsuccessful. And a crucial part of execution is having a plan. Let me give you an example. Imagine you want to build a house. You have a vision of what you want it to look like, the number of rooms, the color scheme, and the location. But if you don't have a blueprint or a plan, how will you bring that vision to life? How will you know where to start, what materials to use, and how long it will take? It's the same with our goals. Without a plan, we are just wandering aimlessly, hoping to stumble upon success. Now some of you may argue that having a plan is too restrictive, that it takes away the spontaneity and excitement of life. But let me tell you this. A plan is not meant to be rigid. It is meant to be a guide, a roadmap that will lead you to your desired destination. And just like a GPS, it can be adjusted and recalibrated as needed. Having a plan when goal setting is not about restricting yourself. It's about giving yourself direction and purpose. It's about taking control of your life and making intentional choices that will lead you to where you want to be. But what happens when we don't have a plan? When we approach our goals haphazardly, without any direction or strategy? Well, the first consequence is that we waste time. Time is our most valuable asset, and we cannot afford to waste it. Without a plan, we find ourselves going around in circles, trying different things but never making any real progress. And before we know it, another year has passed, and we are no closer to our goals. The second consequence of not having a plan is that we become easily distracted. We live in a world where distractions are everywhere, social media, Netflix, and endless notifications. Without a plan, we are more likely to give in to these distractions and lose focus on what truly matters to us. We become reactive instead of proactive, letting external factors dictate our actions rather than our own intentions. And the third consequence is that we become demotivated. When we don't see any progress towards our goals, we start to doubt ourselves and our abilities. We start to question if our dreams are even achievable, and this demotivation can lead to giving up on our goals altogether. But my friends, it doesn't have to be this way. It's not too late to turn things around. It's not too late to start making progress towards your goals. And it all starts with having a plan. So, how do we create a plan for our goals? The first step is to get clear on what you want. You cannot create a plan if you don't know what you're aiming for. Take some time to reflect on your goals and write them down. Be specific and make sure they align with your values and passions. The second step is to break down your goals into smaller manageable tasks. This will make them less overwhelming and more achievable. Think of it as climbing a mountain. You don't start at the top. You take one step at a time. The third step is to set a timeline for each task. This will give you a sense of urgency and help you stay on track. But it's also essential to be realistic with your timeline and allow for some flexibility. Remember, a plan is not set in stone. And finally, the last step is to take action. A plan is useless if you don't act on it. It's like having a map but not moving your feet. So make a commitment to yourself to take consistent action towards your goals. And don't be afraid to adjust your plan as needed. Life is unpredictable, and sometimes we have to adapt to new circumstances. With number two. I want to address a common obstacle that many of us face when setting goals. The fear of failure. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had a dream, a goal, a burning desire in your heart, but the thought of failing stopped you from even attempting to pursue it? Have you ever let the fear of failure hold you back from reaching your full potential? If you answered yes, then you are not alone. Fear of failure is a common struggle that we all face, but it is up to us to overcome it. You see, fear of failure is not something that we are born with. It is something that we learn along the way. As children, we are fearless. We try new things without hesitation. We fall and get back up. 
we dream big and believe that anything is possible. But as we grow older, we are conditioned to fear failure. We are taught to avoid risks and stick to what is safe and comfortable. We are bombarded with messages that failure is something to be ashamed of, something to be avoided at all costs. But let me tell you this. Failure is not the enemy. In fact, failure is a necessary part of success. It is through our failures that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. Think about it. Every successful person you admire has experienced failure. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking creativity and imagination. Oprah Winfrey was told she was unfit for television. Steve Jobs was fired from the company he co-founded. But did they let their failures define them? No. They used them as stepping stones to their success. So why do we fear failure so much? It is because we attach our self-worth to our achievements. We believe that if we fail, we are failures. But let me tell you this. Failure is an event, not a person. Just because you failed at something does not mean that you are a failure. It simply means that you have not yet succeeded. And the only way to succeed is to keep trying, to keep pushing through the fear of failure. Now I'm not saying that failure is easy to deal with. It can be devastating. It can be demoralizing. It can even be embarrassing. But it is in those moments of failure that our character is truly tested. It is in those moments that we have a choice. To let failure defeat us, or to use it as a stepping stone to success. So, how do we overcome the fear of failure when setting goals? The first step is to reframe our mindset. Instead of viewing failure as something to be avoided, view it as a learning opportunity. Embrace the idea that failure is a necessary part of the journey toward success. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. The second step is to set realistic expectations. Many times we set ourselves up for failure by setting unrealistic goals. This does not mean that we should not dream big, but we should also break down our goals into smaller, achievable steps. This way, even if we do not reach our ultimate goal, we can still celebrate the progress we have made. The third step is to have a growth mindset. Instead of focusing on the outcome, focus on the process. See each failure as an opportunity to learn and grow. As long as you are making progress, you are moving in the right direction. The fourth step is to surround yourself with a supportive network. We become like the people we spend the most time with. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, who encourage you, and who will pick you up when you fall. And remember, it is not about the number of people in your network, it is about the quality of those relationships. And the fifth and final step is to take action. As the saying goes, action cures fear. The longer we wait, the more our fear of failure grows. So take that first step, no matter how small it may seem. And when you do fail, and you will, do not let it stop you from taking the next step. With number one, I want to address a crucial topic that often gets overlooked. The lack of accountability when it comes to goal setting. We live in a world where everyone wants success, but very few are willing to take responsibility for their actions. We have become a society of excuses, blaming others and external factors for our failures. We have lost sight of the power of accountability, and it is hindering our growth and potential. Accountability is the foundation of success. It is the willingness to take ownership of our choices, actions, and results. It is the understanding that we are in control of our lives, and that our decisions shape our future. Without accountability, we are like ships without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. But why is accountability so crucial when it comes to goal setting? Let me tell you a story. Imagine two individuals, John and Sarah, both with the same goal of losing 20 pounds. John sets a goal to lose 20 pounds in three months and holds himself accountable. He creates a plan, tracks his progress, and makes necessary adjustments along the way. Sarah, on the other hand, sets the same goal but does not hold herself accountable. She makes excuses, skips workouts, and indulges in unhealthy food choices. After three months, John has successfully lost 20 pounds, while Sarah has only lost 5 pounds. What made the difference? Accountability. John took responsibility for his actions and stayed committed to his goal, while Sarah let excuses and lack of accountability stand in her way. Now let me ask you, who do you think will feel a sense of accomplishment and pride? Who will have more confidence and motivation to set and achieve more significant goals? It is evident that accountability is the key to success. 
So how can we cultivate accountability in our lives? The first step is to take ownership of our choices. We must stop making excuses and blaming others for our failures. It is time to take a hard look in the mirror and acknowledge that our decisions have led us to where we are today. When we take responsibility for our actions, we gain the power to change our circumstances. The next step is to set clear and specific goals. Without a clear destination, we cannot hold ourselves accountable for our progress. When setting goals, be specific about what you want to achieve. Create a plan and set a timeline. This will give you a roadmap to follow and track your progress. But setting goals and taking ownership is not enough. We must also have the courage to hold ourselves accountable. It takes courage to admit when we have fallen short of our expectations. It takes courage to admit our mistakes and make necessary changes. But it is this courage that will push us to grow and achieve our goals. Another crucial aspect of accountability is having a support system. We all need someone who will hold us accountable and push us to be our best selves. It can be a friend, a mentor, or a coach. Having someone to share our goals and progress with can provide us with the motivation and encouragement we need to stay on track. Now I understand that accountability can be intimidating. It means taking responsibility for our failures and admitting when we have fallen short. But let me tell you, the rewards of accountability far outweigh the fear. When we hold ourselves accountable, we become the masters of our destiny. We gain control over our lives and have the power to shape our future. Accountability also builds character and integrity. When we take responsibility for our actions, we become trustworthy and reliable individuals. We become leaders who inspire and motivate others to take charge of their lives. But most importantly, accountability leads to success. When we hold ourselves accountable, we become unstoppable. We are no longer held back by excuses and external factors. We become focused and determined to achieve our goals, and nothing can stand in our way. So my friends, as we continue on our journey of personal development, I urge you to cultivate accountability in your lives. Take ownership of your choices. Set clear and specific goals. Have the courage to hold yourself accountable and surround yourself with a supportive network. Remember, accountability is the key to success and it is within each and every one of us to unlock its power. In part two of this series, we will dive deeper into personal development and how it ties into accountability. But for now, I leave you with this quote by the great Zig Ziglar. Accountability is the glue that ties commitment to the result. So let us all commit to being accountable for our goals and watch as we achieve success beyond our wildest dreams. Thank you.